I realized that here was an opportunity to make sure that BET was placed in a strong brand-oriented uh, company like Viacom and one that had a sensitivity to BET's independence. And so we struck a deal uh, that uh, sold BET to Viacom. Welcome to the Dark Times channel. And so I want to take a second to chime in on Tyler Perry. And apparently, or allegedly, at least the word is that he's just finalized a deal to go ahead and buy BET. He's allegedly got a deal in place that will make him the majority shareholder of BET. And I was looking at some of the details of the deal, of the alleged deal, and that was very interesting. And they said that they were intentionally seeking out someone specifically black to take majority ownership of BET. They thought with BET's numbers being down that a black person could help, you know, re-energize the company. Basically fix it, that's what they mean. Basically fix it, re-energize, fix it basically, help us. We've ruined BET, can you at least get it back to profitable? Basically that's all that means. And so there was three major candidates that were in the running. One was Tyler Perry, Another one was Byron Allen, and then the third was none other than Sean Combs, or Diddy, or whatever he goes by. Now, if you look at it, if you had to pick between three black billionaires, which one you going with? If you're the European shareholders of BET, which one you going with? Which one's the safer pick? You would think Byron Allen. Byron Allen sounds like a safe pick, but no. It's by far Tyler Perry. It's by far Tyler Perry. And then just to be real, just to be flat out blunt and flat out honest, his come up was off of wearing a dress. It don't get any safer than that. Excuse my English. <laughs> it don't get any better than that. A black man that puts on dresses for a living. It doesn't get any safer than that. And you can say what you want about Diddy, Sean Puffy Combs. You can say what you want about him. He definitely has his questionable moments. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the level of freakiness when it comes to Diddy. But you can say what you want about his personal life. But one thing you can't talk about. One thing you can't really condemn. I won't say condemn. But one thing you can't come after him is his music videos and his production. For the most part, like I said, I'm not up on any of his newer stuff if he has anything out. But... The stuff that he's produced and the quality videos that he's produced over the years, I'm I'm darn sure he had a hand in it. I would much rather have him at the helms of BET. Because at the very least, you're not going to get bombarded with Medea shows and Medea movies. It's going to be a real television network. And so that's why they chose Tyler Perry. And the fact that they closed at an um, undisclosed amount says a lot. It wasn't an open bid. It wasn't going to go to the highest bidder. It was going to go to the right bidder. It had very little to do with the money. It was about getting the right person in there. The right person to do the job. And Tyler Perry is definitely the right person for the job. And so for the life of me, I'm not even going to try to understand how people can be excited about this in the least bit. And so if y'all remember Bob Johnson back in 2000, he sold BET to Viacom. And that was the downward spiral of BET. We went from this. To this. And what a lot of people fail to realize is that when Bob Johnson sold BET to Viacom back in 2000, that was probably the single most devastating blow to the so-called black community. You could talk about Jim Crow. You could talk about slavery. There's a lot of different things you can go into when you're talking about the wrongs that have been done in the so-called black community. There's a lot of different avenues you can go down. 
But when you're talking about entertainment, especially when you're talking about a group of people that have limited access to be able to look at themselves and see themselves on screen, when you're talking about a group of people that are starving to see people that look like them, you're talking about taking a group of people and turning their culture into a gangster culture almost overnight. What's up? I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be. It's like, who I hope is trying to take my rolling it. Talking, you don't even have to try. You're cute enough for luck with me tonight. Now, we can make the argument and say that hip hop and rap existed well before 2000 and it was promoted on BET. And that's true, no doubt. We had the Easy es the Tupac Shakur's, which I'm gonna get into a little bit later. But hip hop was never meant to be the main course. Hip hop was always the side dish. Rap was always a side dish. Cause we're talking about music of substance, music of passion, music of love, music of affection. When you're talking about rhythm and blues. And so almost overnight, the over promotion of hip hop and rap turned the black community upside down. And not just a gangster culture, but also a subculture of materialism. Push the hottest bees, build fast through the city, play Monopoly with real cash, me and Biggie and the models be shaking nays. And there's nothing wrong with being materialistic. There's nothing wrong with being unmaterialistic. But there's a balance to things. And I would say around 2000, after or around 2000, that's when you started to see a shift in what kind of music was being made and what was being promoted on BET. And a lot of what was promoted to the so-called black community was the need for materialism and having material things at all costs, at any cost. We went from having music with rhythm and spirit to get rich or die trying. That's the transition. You started to see more of the music videos with the flashy cars and the bling bling and the popping bottles. You saw an oversaturation with that after 2000. There was no more balance. It was no more promotion of traditional rhythm and blues music. And subsequently, like I said earlier, it turned the so-called black community on its head almost overnight. You know, you can say what you want about BET in the 90s still promoting, you know, hip hop rap and gangster rap with NWA and Eazy E and all those guys coming up. You can say what you want, but we still had individuals like Tupac Shakur. We still had individuals like that. We had Nas. We had Ice Cube. And Ice Cube was a different Ice Cube in the 90s. Ice Cube in the 90s used to hang with Khalid. You know, he was a much different Ice Cube than Are We There Yet Ice Cube. And the same thing with Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur, if you think about it, the only reason that Tupac Shakur labeled himself this thug, he knew that by labeling himself a thug and by calling himself a thug that he wouldn't be a threat. He wouldn't be a threat he can still get away with sneaking in a message at the end of the day as long as it's all categorized under thug music nobody really paid attention nobody really paid attention except the youth Brenda's gotta make a wrong way can't go to a family they won't let us and so he masqueraded as this thug to the masses but all the while he was definitely being heard and his message was being heard and that was the issue with Tupac. And this is one of the things that Pac actually mentioned in the video. And I actually look for this video, but I believe this video has been scrubbed from the internet. But let me know if y'all remember in the comment section, let me know if y'all remember a video where Pac says, after I'm gone, you're gonna see who they bring. He goes, after I'm gone, you guys are gonna see the next generation of rappers. And if you thought I was bad, they're going to be 10 times worse. He said something to that effect, but I haven't been able to find it. So let me know if y'all um, know what I'm talking about in the comment section. And if y'all remember this interview that he did, some individuals, some individuals in this world and in this life are just too strong 
I won't even say strong, not strong in the sense of willpower or physical strength. They can't help but to speak out. They can't help it. They don't see any risk. I won't say they don't see a risk. They don't care about the risk because they don't necessarily understand the risk the same way that most people do. As far as maybe a fear of dying, a fear of losing opportunity, a fear of losing money. And Tupac Shakur was one of those people. Anybody who gets in a shootout with a police officer because he sees something going down, he sees another fellow citizen being harmed. And he pulls it out and doesn't have to. Anybody who's on that level, I would call that the Joker archetype. And I did a video on the Joker archetype. If you want to check it out, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. But yeah, I will call Tupac a classic Joker archetype. And if y'all remember, one of the things about the Joker archetype is his level of innocence. And like I explained in that lecture, when I say innocence, I'm not talking about as far as purity or without sin or anything like that. I'm not talking about anything as simple as that. I mean innocence in the fact that they don't know any better. All they know is righteousness. And they could give a damn about the consequences. And so it comes across as callous and careless and reckless. That's why you see in the Joker movie, they make him look like he's somewhat of a, a fool, a brilliant fool. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's exactly what it is, the yin and the yang. Do I really look like a guy with a plane? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. So let me bring it back a little bit, back to the state of BET. Like I said, BET is on the verge of being sold or in the process of being sold to Tyler Perry. And, and so it's gonna be the beginning of the new end. I think we're about to see a total collapse, a total collapse. This is almost in game, as they say, in game. This is the Thanos snap. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We all should be at the point now where you're almost ready just to get it over with. And I don't mean give up. I don't mean give up. Quite the opposite. It's almost like the proverbial superhero movie. Where at the very end, the last moment, that's when the hero comes. That's when you're saved. And it's very telling. It's always the same story throughout time. You can go back in time and you'll find similar stories. It's always at the very last moment that the Redeemer comes. You don't have to look very far. You can open up your Bible. At the very end, the Redeemer shall come. And so it is what it is. It is what it is. I think that's the one thing I think about that gets me not being emotional about it. Because it's going to happen. Knowing that all this that we're going through and all that we go through, it must happen. And it couldn't happen any other way. And I'm not talking about a Redeemer as far as a man falling from the sky or anything like that. And so we'll see. And so definitely let me know what you guys think in the comment section and make sure you guys hit the like button on your way out. And as usual, peace and chaos.